So in our last review video, I made a claim about the album that I thought worked as a whole. Turns out I was wrong, but I think I was interestingly wrong, and I want to talk about it in today's edition of Music Theory Class. Hey everybody, I'm Michael, and that claim that I made that I wanted to test was about melismas in Tori Amos's 1992 album Little Earthquakes. First, let's listen to a clip of the video to hear what I said. Most of this album is very syllabic in its text setting. There's one pitch per syllable of text, but in most of the songs, the most important part is where the melisma comes in. So in Crucify, that's on the word chains. Suddenly we have this long melisma on the word chains. It kind of is the point of the song, breaking the chains. So let's break this down. First off, what is a melisma? A melisma is when you have a single syllable of text that is sung on more than one pitch. So for example, if I say, my name is Michael, and I sing, my name is Michael, there are no melismas there because each syllable has one pitch, including Michael, Michael, two pitches on a word, but one pitch per syllable. If I wanted to make that mel melismatic, Instead, I could say, my name is Michael. That was a crazy example. Way too many flourishes on that. But that's exactly what a melisma is for. It's to give it a little bit more interest, and it often makes a word sound more important. The opposite of melismatic setting is syllabic setting, so one pitch per syllable, like that first example I just gave. So when we look at Little Earthquakes, I made the hypothesis that each song uses a melisma on an important word to say, here, this is the important part. That's not really the case, but I think it is the case for a few of the songs, most notably Crucify, which I want to start with. So here's what I did to test that. I went through and listened to each of these songs and read through the lyrics. For each of these syllables, if they only had one pitch to them, I ignored them. If there were two, I wrote it down in one section. If there were three, I wrote them down in another section, and so on. As you might expect, most of the words, most of these syllables in these songs are set syllabically. So there's one pitch for each of these. And that's really true about most American popular music. And to get to some styles that are more melismatic or more florid, you might say, you would have to go back to styles of music that are fairly old, maybe even 19th century opera and other classical music and things like that, especially since the dawn of an American style of music, which has become popular in a lot of the world, things tend to be more syllabic when you're in that style. Let's go back to Crucify now. There are a bunch of two notes per syllable here and there, but they are mostly little tiny decorations. Back to my example that I sang earlier, when I said, my name is Michael. If I wanted to do a simple two note thing on this, I might do something like, my name is Michael, Ma is two pitches on one syllable. And that there just smooths out that line. It's a little bit of decoration that smooths out a jump, takes what was a jump and made it all stepwise motion instead. Other things that are like that are little things that like are just one step away and then she'll leap in a different direction or, or something like that. That is really common for what Tori does with her two pitch per syllable melismatic singing in this. And I think you could even make a case that that doesn't really count as a melisma, but for my purposes, I am going to count it. Three syllables, she gets into some slightly more important words. Says, that's eh, not quite as important, but then please and save. Those both come in the bridge, so we'll talk about that in a second. Moving up, we've got four pitches on the syllable I. That's also from the bridge, so again, we'll talk about that in a second. Then we get to the big ones. Eight syllables for the word cry also in the bridge. 10 syllables for the words chains, B, and me. B and me are not as important words, but they are also coming from the bridge. Chains happens every chorus at the end of the chorus. Chains. 
it feels like we're leading up to that because we haven't really had many more syllable words leading up to it. What does that mean in the context of this whole song? The verses are very syllabic. When they're not, it's because of those little decorations that I was talking about before. Or she's stretching a syllable to make it fit the rhythm so that she can use the same rhythm at the same spot in a different verse. When we get to the pre-chorus and the chorus, they're still mostly syllabic, except for chains. But then we get to the bridge, which is please, please, please. That's where everything is a melisma. And I don't think the lyrics in the bridge are as important as they as the word chains is in the song. In this case, I think it's more of a textural contrast. And I do want to talk about texture in another one of these music theory class videos at some point, but I have the perfect album to talk about it with saved for later. So we'll get to that eventually. So in Crucify, I really do think that the important melismas do two things. They give us the important word chains and they showcase a change in texture in the bridge. I'm going to speed through the rest of the album mostly because there aren't as many interesting things to talk about in the album as there are in Crucify. In Girl, there are very few melismas, period, and if they are, they're typically the same two-pitch melismas that we talked about with Crucify. In Silent All These Years, it's still mostly syllabic, and we don't have the same way of setting apart the bridge as we do with a melisma in Crucify. In the case of Silent All These Years, it's sung in a higher range, more vocal harmonies and a fuller texture. That makes it stand out there. In Precious Things, it's more of the same with mostly syllabic setting, but when we do get to the chorus, it's basically all two pitch melismas. And how it's mostly step, it's all stepwise motion in that section, and how it's very steady pitches. I think that helps to highlight the title of the song, Precious Things. Winter is more of the same from all of the rest. There's not that much interesting. Happy Phantom is almost entirely syllabic with a few little two note figures here and there. China has a few more melismas in the chorus, but they're not really anything super notable. In Leather, the last syllable of each line of the verses has a higher chance of being a two note melisma, but there's still nothing really making it stick out in how Tori uses melismas. In Mother, the last chorus has more melismas due to its improvisatory nature. So she's basically doing like the diva soloing over the choral vocals, but it's all completely improvised or improvised sounding. I don't know exactly what she wrote down. Tear in Your Hand is a little bit more interesting. The choruses have more melismas like they do in Crucify, but they're still mostly twos and threes, but they are more regular to help it stand apart like Precious Things. It feels more steady, whereas a lot of the verses feel like her rhythms are conversational. It's, as you would say, the text. And so just like in Precious Things, the melodic rhythm slows down there to highlight those text, those texts, to highlight those words. The bridge has longer melismas that feel like they're kind of trembling a little bit, which is interesting. Me and a Gun is an interesting case. This is so improvisatory, sort of like the solo at the end of the vocal solo at the end of Mother, it's sort of hard to know exactly what Tori wrote down, what was planned ahead of time, and what was just improvised in the moment. And the melismas get longer the farther away the melody gets from the seed melody, the basic melody of the entire song that she starts off with. And that helps to show that separation between this is the awful thing that's happening to me right now and this is where my thoughts are in this other world somewhere else. Do you know Carolina? And then last track, Little Earthquakes. There's a slight uptick in melismas leading up to the choruses, like we're like building up to the choruses the words get stretched a little bit. But then in the choruses, again, there's still like slightly more. The bridge slowly develops more and more melismas as it progresses. So we start off with, give me life, give me pain, all syllabic. But then at the end, when she's doing her diva soloing over it again, the words are stretched out and in a very Tory thing that she does in a lot of these songs that I haven't talked about yet, she adds her own syllables 
two words that are not multi-syllable words. We saw that first in Chains from Crucify. Chains. You could sing that without that. Chains. It's not as fun though. I like the way Tori does it. That's it for this one. I hope this was interesting. Uh, let me know if you have any other things in any of these videos when I sh mention something that you wanna know what I'm talking about. I'd love to talk about it with you because I love teaching. So let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to talk about. To this side is a video that YouTube thinks you might like. So check that out if you're interested. Up there is the link that you can follow to subscribe to our channel or look at more of our stuff if you're interested. We do reviews of music and video games and we talk about media in general otherwise. Please like the video if you liked it, give it a pity like if you didn't like it, and maintain your groovy selves. See you next time. Daddy!